Hello and welcome to Omron's Quick Tip video series. I'm Doug Brown and today I'll be showing you how to build a simple application for the G9SP safety controller. First, let's look at the hardware I'll be using. I have a computer running G9SP configurator software, a standard USB cable, and a G9SP controller. Today I happen to be using a G9SP-N20S, which has 20 inputs and 8 outputs. One important note I should mention is the G9SP software is not included as part of CX1 and needs to be purchased separately. The part number is WS02-G9SP01-V1. So let's talk about wiring. Today I'm going to build a simple safety circuit that replicates the functionality of a safety relay. We're going to have a G9SP, a 24 volt DC power supply, an e-stop button with two normally closed contacts, a reset button with one normally open contact, and two G7SA force guided relays with auxiliary normally closed contacts. So the first thing we need to do is wire up the power. And so I need to connect 24 volts into the V1 and zero volts to the G1 terminal on the top of the G9SP. And I also need to wire into the V2 and G2 terminals at the bottom of the G9SP. That's for the output power. Next, we need to wire our inputs. So I'm going to take the test output signal T0 through the first contact of the e-stop switch and back into safety input 0. Test output 1 will go through the other contact and back into safety input 1. Now I need to wire the reset button. It's going to go through test output 2 and then back into safety input 2. The last input we need to wire is the auxiliary contact monitoring to make sure our relays do not weld. That will go from test output 3 to terminal 11 on the first force guided relay, then terminal 12 over to terminal 11 on the second relay, and terminal 12 on the second relay back to safety input 3. So it makes a loop between the two safety relays. That handles our inputs. Now we need to wire the output outputs I should say. So we have safety output 0 will go to terminal 0 of the first relay, safety output 1 goes to terminal 0 on the second relay, and to complete the circuit we take terminal 1 on both relays back to ground. And that completes our wiring. So now we are in the G9SP configurator software, and when it first starts up it gives us the option to either create a new project or to open an existing file. We are going to create a new project. This will bring up a wizard where we can do the hardware configuration and the I.O. configuration. Today I'm using the G9SP-N20S, so I'll drag and drop that into my config. If I had an expansion I.O. unit, I could grab one of those and drag them into one of the two expansion slots. Next, I configure my I.O. We start with the outputs. I have the two force guided relays and the external device mon monitoring signal for the welding check. So I'm going to grab this first option here and drag it over top of the first two outputs. Since the welding check will also require an input, it asks us which input did we wire into, and I'm going to tell it that I used safety input 3. We're done with the outputs, so now we go to the input tab. Here I need to add in the e-stop switch with two normally closed contacts. I put that on top of input 0 and 1. And a little further down the list of options here, there's a reset switch. And I'll drag and drop that onto safety input 2. The next thing I need to configure is my test source. While it would be okay to use test output 0 for the reset and EDM, I physically wired them to test output 2 and 3. If you have additional, it's always good to spread them around. It can only help with your troubleshooting. Next, I could assign more meaningful I.O. comments. Today I'll leave these as is. The default will be fine. This brings us into the code editor. Uh, the G9SP is programmed using function block diagram. So what I'll do first is I'm going to grab my two e-stop inputs. And I'll go to my function block list and grab an e-stop function block. And I just click and drag to make wires between the inputs and the e-stop function block. This function block's purpose is to check for discrepancy errors between the two input channels. 
Next, I need to put in my reset switch. So when the reset switch is toggled, I want to allow my system to start back up again. So I'll wire the reset switch into the reset input of the reset function block and the output enable from the e-stop onto the input of the reset. So this acts kind of like a latching circuit. Uh, if the e-stop circuit's good and the reset switch is pressed, it'll allow power to go through. Once the e-stop drops out, it will stay off until the reset is toggled again. Lastly, we need to do our weld check. So I drop in my EDM contact and I grab the EDM function block. It stands for external device monitoring. Create a wire from the reset to the EDM and from the EDM input to the function block. Lastly, I go to my output tab and grab my two safety relay outputs and I wire them from the output side of the EDM circuit to those outputs. And now my program is basically done. What I need to do now is connect to my G9SP and download the program and test it out. So to connect, I click the connect button. This will establish communications. If you have problems doing this, I recommend that you watch our video on installing G9SP USB drivers. That's most likely where your problem is. Once you're connected, I'm going to download the program Ask for a password always when you do operations with the safety controller, that's by design. When you have a fully configured system out in the field, you really should have a password so that no one can mess with it. So I've downloaded my program, now I wanna watch it run. So I'll put the controller into run mode. And so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna click the start program monitor. So now the IO is highlighted in green. So I can see that my e-stop button is good right now, but if I push it, it shuts off. I can release it. So we can see the IO toggling state. I'm going to push the reset button and we can see that the outputs turn on. If I toggle the e-stop again, the e-stop shuts off or the output shuts off and I have to hit the reset to turn it back on again. So that's normally how things work. Let me just show you the external device monitoring quickly. If I was to pop out this relay, it detects that the EDM input is not in the right state and it makes the EDM function block go red, showing that there's an error with the feedback signal. To correct that, I'll put the relay back in and we will cycle the reset switch. And now everything's back to normal again. The last thing we need to do to make sure our program is all good is we need to lock the controller. That means I'm done with debugging. The program is exactly as I want it and it will lock it so it cannot be changed. And in that way, the next time it powers up, it will power up into run mode. So to make this happen, first I need to shut off the monitoring Next, I go to communication and verify. This will check that what's in the controller now exactly matches what's on my computer screen. It then generates a configuration report that I can use to verify the configuration. And lastly, it asks me if I wanna lock the device and I will say yes. And of course, a password. Generally, the password is always blank but I recommend if you're doing one in the field that you actually do put one in. So that's how to make a basic program in a G9FP safety controller. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for more Omron quick tip videos.